What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with another episode of Building on the Basics. And today I want to cover one topic and that is the tracking sensors I've been using in Drone Wars and in some of the other creations I've been using recently. So I'm going to show you literally straight up how to make one of these and then also how to use the extended range blueprints that I've been using. So. We're going to start off with a small ship, and small ships tend to be better than large ships for tracking. Uh, this is just to do with the fact that the blocks are that much smaller, you can get the things that much closer together. And we're going to build a cross shape like that, and on this cross shape we're going to put five gyros and five sensors. So because I want to show you how to do the extended range things, I'm going to use the blueprint here, and I'm going to bring up my 800 meter one, and paste that onto the cross in a specific layout. So we're going to have it like that. And then we're going to go and put on the back of this a large reactor because these sensors are very very juicy, the extended range means that they also consume a lot more power which is good. And then we're going to go and put five gyroscopes on it. And these, they don't have to be in any particular positions but it really helps if you have them all the same way orientated. So we're going to have them all pointing with the uh, little circular bit upwards on this one. Uh, so let's have one, two, three, four, five and then we're going to put a final one back here, why not? So there we go, we've got our basic setup and this is pretty much all you need to make this work. So now what we need to do is go in and name the sensors. So this sensor at the top is going to be our up sensor and we need to go through each one of these and name them relative to its position. So we have a down sensor, this although it's on our right it's on, this, on the drone's left so that would be our left sensor and obviously the final one we have left over here is our right sensor. The one in the middle for the time being doesn't matter too much. That's for doing something else. So we'll leave that for the time being. Let's just call it center sensor and we're not going to do anything with that. Next thing we need to do is go and name the gyros to match. Now the gyros positions don't really matter so you can just do this straight up through the control panel. Have up gyro, a down gyro, And then our final one, a bit like the center sensor, doesn't really have a purpose as far as this side of things is concerned. So just for the time being, call this a stabilized gyro because we're not going to use it. It's going to stop the thing from going mental when everything else is not on. So that's our basic setup. The next thing we now need to do, and I'm going to turn in the info screen, I'm going to have sensor field range on, and I'm going to put an antenna on this so that we can have a look and see what the sensor fields are doing as we change them. So at the moment we have a big box, as you would expect, everything is on maximum range. But we need to go into each sensor and remove its opposite. So in this case, the up sensor, we need to get rid of all of the bottom range. And also the back, because back sensors are handled slightly differently, and I'll go into that a bit later. So on the down sensor, we need to remove the top, and we need to remove the back. On the right sensor, obviously we need to remove the left and the back. And on the left sensor, we need to remove the right and the back. Then we need to work out the gyros. So what you want to do now for this is get yourself in a position where, let's just have a look at the sensor fields quickly. You can see this has now created a, a sort of cross where the sensors only just overlap in one specific place, right in the middle. They're going to overlap for a second. But other than that, they're in separate areas, sort of gridded out. So we're going to go in and we're going to set up the gyros now. So. We just uh, set the ownership to me before I forget. It's kind of helpful for later. And what we want to do with the gyros is we want to get the ship behind us in a position where we can kind of see it. So you can see, if I uh, access this one here, you can kind of see the ship in the background there. And there is a mod that can help with this, a transparent uh, UI mod that I haven't tried out yet, but it sounds pretty good. And what you need to go in, and we need to override the controls and work out which one of these is going to make the action that this says. So in this case, we want it to turn up as far as the drone is concerned when we do it. And I know from experience with how these are laid out that pitch should be the one we want. So that's down. So in fact, we want it to go up. So it's going to be that way. And what we can do is turn that off, put the pitch all the way up, and then we know what the down jar is going to be as well because we put them all the same way around. So we can turn this off, override the controls, and that's going to be down. And then we can, with the left, find out what that is. And again, I know from experience it's going to be on the the roll axes. Let's just see if we can get a look on it. That looks like, from the drone's perspective, that was turning right. It was turning left from our, our screen, but again, this is all about the drone's perspective, so let's have that off, and it's going to be that way, and then right, obviously, is going to be that way. So that's all set up, and now we just need to link the things together. So 
in the sensors we're going to go in and on the left sensor we're going to tell it to turn on and off this left gyro and we're going to do that with all of them except for the center so let's go in and on off that was the right yep down on and off and finally up on and off and now we're pretty much set up uh, everything we need to do for the actual tracking part is ready um, all we need to do now is go in and tell the sensors what to track so at the moment they're on all sorts of stuff we're going to turn them on to enemy and let's have them on small ships large ships and players that's a relatively likely scenario so now they're all set up like that and if I was to go over here and paste in something from in here what have we got uh, Cannonball was not a bad one, nice small target for it. You can see that as soon as that's come in, it's turned to work out where it was. If I turn the UI off, you can see all the sensors are on. And what's happening is, as it moves around in the field, it's turning sensors on and off. So let's get rid of this. And if I put this up here now, it's gonna turn just those top two sensors on, the ones closest to us, which are gonna activate just those gyros. And because of that, eventually it reaches a center point where all the gyros are active at once and they're counteracting each other. And that's the point at which it stops and centers. So now you can see it's moving slightly, so it's still turning to track it. But if we uh, delete this, we can go back and we can set up the last bit this needs, which is the center sensor. So on this center sensor, we're going to have it to, well, fire some guns. So one of the things you don't need with the center sensor is it, for it to be massive. Um, generally, you want it sort of a similar sort of size to your ship itself, or at least to the size of your gun layout. So as this is a tiny little thing we're working with here, I can go and turn all of these down to, say, two. We can have the back completely off because we're not going to be shooting behind us. And then this is going to be dependent on the range at which you want it to do whatever action it is. In this case, we're going to have it shooting. So we can have it, say, I don't know. If one thing I forgot to mention with these extended rate, if you touch the value, it will change from that down to 50. So our options now are either 800 or 50. And if you want to make any other ranges, you have to go and edit the blueprint. And I will explain really quickly at the end how to go and do that. Um, but in this case, it means I'm going to have to leave it on 800 or replace it with another one set to 200 or whatever. So now that's done, we can put some guns on it. So let's grab couple of these and because I know they're going to cause some thrust as well when we fire them let's put some thrusters on the back uh, in fact for one extra demonstration I will put enough thrusters on that we can actually control this ship or at least it's not going to just drift away on us so I've laid it out with the thrusters we need to need for flight but I'm actually going to stick one extra one and a timer block on on the bottom so that we can do a little bit extra functionality so if we put this on like this I use two time blocks and a thruster we can set this up a little bit like one of my drones so if we go into the center sensor just for ease of access we need these two timer blocks to basically be opposites of each other so we just call them on and off for the time being <coughs> sorry about that and let's make a quick, oh, we haven't got any. Let's put some guns on it, another important one. And the other thing we're gonna need to do is go and find the very last engine we built. So that'll be this last thruster here, and we're gonna call it forwards, and we're gonna turn it off and put the override on. And it means that we can now use these uh, timer blocks here to create a group of our Gatlings. Yes, now we can use these timer blocks here to create uh, an on-off setup for what happens when it detects something. So we can have shoot on like that, and we want to go and find that forwards thruster, and we can have toggle block on, and then you want the off one to obviously do the opposite. So Gatlings, shoot off, and oops, forwards, toggle block off. And now when that center center detects something, it's going to shoot the Gatling guns and drive towards the target. So everything should now be set up, ready for the firing to work. So let me just check that everything is shared to me. Yep. And we should be ready. These things, where's our sensor sensor? Need to go and put in on trigger now and off trigger now. And then everything should be ready for a little final test. So if we paste down this cannonball now, it should not only turn and lock in, but also start firing and driving towards it. And unfortunately it killed it quite quickly, but you did see very briefly there the uh, engine on the back on. Now I mentioned that 
I was going to cover how to do rear sensors as well. And the thing with rear sensors is that obviously you don't want them conflicting with the ones on the front. So the easiest way to set them up is to literally copy, duplicate what you've got on the front again the other way around. Now, it's not as simple, unfortunately, as just copy and pasting it because you'll need to copy it off like this, rename everything to sensor 2, gyroscope 2, etc. before you connect them together. But the layout is exactly the same on the rear. And all you want those sensors to do on the rear is the opposite of what's happening on the front. So when they detect something, if the left one detects something, it activates the right gyroscope. And if the up one detects something, it activates the down gyroscope. And that means that they work in parallel with the ones on the front to help spin the ship round. Now I said, as a final thing, I would cover quickly how to edit your own blueprints. So I'm gonna to cut to a couple of quick screenshots for this, but basically you need to go to the app data folder on your computer. Uh, for space engineers, go and find the blueprint folder and in there you will find a .spc, .sbc file. Uh, and if you don't have a blueprint of the sensor available, you need to go in and make one first. But in that .sbc file, which you can edit using Notepad or Notepad++, you will find a line that has XYZ amounts in negative and positive values. All you need to do to create these is change that amount there to the range you want and then remember to change the name of the blueprint, the two lines at the top and the bottom, to match that new sensor so that you don't end up with duplicates. Then the game gets a little bit confused. And thus you can make your own custom range sensors, really straightforward. Then just kick the game back up again, load your blueprint and off you go. So thanks a lot for watching guys, hope that was helpful for you. I know there was a couple of little hiccups towards the end, but when you're recording live occasionally stuff does go wrong. If you did find it helpful, please hit like, please hit subscribe, it really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.